Hey guys, welcome back to a new video, and today we are reacting to 18 Dark Pig. Pi Can you speak right now? Pixar movies. Apparently, 18 Dark Secrets. Uh, let's get into it. Pixar movies are known to warm everyone's hearts. Whether it's Toy Story or Up, almost everyone has cried at least once when watching a Pixar film. There's something in my eye. But did you know there are some deep, dark secrets behind each film? Not just secrets, but heart-wrenching fan theories that are so spooky, it's hard to forget them. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to join our notification squad so you never miss a video. Without right. further ado, here are some shocking Good dark movie. secrets in Pixar movies. I've crash landed on a strange planet. The impact must have awoken me from hypersleep. It's all the same universe. Yep, you heard that right. There's a huge theory out there that all of the Pixar films live in the same universe. So all those talking bugs, cars, and toys, and monsters live under one canon. The theory was developed by John Negroni, who wrote a whole thesis in 2013 as to why this is possible. The Pixar timeline goes like this. The Good Dinosaur, Brave, The Incredibles 1 and 2, Toy Story, Toy Story 2, Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, Ratatouille, Toy Story 3, Up, Inside Out, Cars, Cars 2, Cars 3, Planes, Planes Fire and Rescue, Wally, -E, A Bug's Life, Monsters U, and finally Monsters Inc. Whew, yeah, it's quite a mouthful. The whole theory is filled with the idea of war against humans and how machines play their part in said war. It gets really dark. What follows is the world becoming overly polluted and inhabitable. It's a little frightening when you think about it. All of this started with the movie Brave, which is apparently when the magic started and animals, toys, and everything else became sentient. It's very in-depth and kind of out there, but the theory was never updated when newer films came out, so we can only guess how everything is still connected. Let us know if you'd like a whole video just devoted to this, because trust us, it's crazy, and there's so much more to get into. We'll just use our imaginations. Now, now, do you see our tree? Same tree. Remember the tree sapling and Wally? Rumor has it that sapling becomes the tree of life in Bug's life. What's different in this theory from the previous one is that the reasons no humans are in Bug's life is that the humans have yet to repopulate the Earth entirely. Tell your boss he can have our house. Really? When I'm dead. Carl is dead. And no, we're not talking about the Walking Dead character. This theory centers around Carl from Up and states that he's being escorted to the afterlife by his dead wife Ellie. As if this movie couldn't get any sadder. I don't have any tears left. The thought behind this is that Ellie is a tiny angel and is bringing her beloved husband to follow her in the afterlife. Thus, this crazy journey ensues and they ended up having their greatest adventure. No, we're not crying. You're crying. Shut up. Who is a witch? This theory is a little unhinged, but hey, let's go with it. We all know how much Boo loved Sully, so this theorist believes that Boo loved and missed Sully so much that when she grew up, she set out to find him. She used all those doors in Monsters, Inc. to travel through time all the way to ye old Scotland, where Brave takes place and discovers the Will of the Wisps. There's a carving in the witch's cottage of Sully, and many think this points to the fact that she's a much older Boo. Or maybe it's just one of those well-placed Easter eggs Pixar is always placing in their films. No one knows for sure, but this would also mean that she's been to the Toy Story dimension, because there's also a carving of the Pizza Planet. This makes the theorists believe that she's the one who's dropping all these Pixar Easter eggs into the other movies. It's all come full circle, folks. Do you never forget kids like Emily or Andy? Andy's mom is Emily. This is a pretty well-known theory in the Pixar canon. Emily, Jesse's previous owner in Toy Story, the one that abandoned her, is actually Andy's mom. Thoughts are that Andy's red hat is actually Emily's old hat that she gave her son, and she's the one to blame for this love of cowboys and westerns. It makes some sense because if we're following the canon, Woody Roundup would have been around the time Andy's mom, Emily, would have been a young girl. This would have made her buy a Woody doll she encountered in her later life for her son. There's also a theory that Emily had Andy young, so she still might have had some childhood things lying around to give him. That's deep. This isn't fair, it's my life! You already had yours! Humans don't live here anymore. This is another simple theory the After Hours team at Cracked came up with. They think all Pixar films take place in the same universe of sentient beings who all come to the conclusion that they didn't want to live with humans anymore and sent them away to live in space on the Axiom ship. You know, the ship housing all the fat people in Wally. -E. Man, it must have stunk in there. And when humans are allowed to return to Earth, they shall be ruled by Cyborg Lord Wally -E and Eve. It got a little wacky at the end there, and it's kind of crappy a way for humans to go out, but honestly, we're not surprised. And this is where it becomes kind of a bummer. In another theory, yes, there are tons of them, Wally -E actually contributed to the world being uninhabitable by destroying the other Wally -E cleaning units because they were trying to take his gadgets. 
Either way, it's not great for us humans. You're still behind, Randall. You know, maybe I should realign the screen and take Just out. get me another door! Ah! Randall and Toy Story. The whole plot of Monsters, Inc. is that the monster's purpose is to scare little kids for energy use. Many think that Randall, the purple lizard creep, who is the villain in Monsters, Inc., is in fact Andy's monster. We can see Randall training up against the same wallpaper that's in Andy's room, that baby blue cloud wallpaper. Randall is seen shape-shifting in front of it, making fans think he's training to blend into Andy's room. Great. First his toys come to life and fight each other, now he's got a shape-shifting monster after him. Andy can't catch a break. He's gone. He's gone. There, there. No, he's gone. It's all right. He's gone. He'll be okay. No, no, they took him away. Nothing is real in Finding Nemo. Another depressing theory in the Pixar universe is the whole story behind Finding Nemo's Marlin. The story is already sad as it is. A guy loses his wife and all his kids, and then his only surviving child gets kidnapped. Pretty sad stuff. Well, this theory makes it all sadder. Some believe Marlin's family and wife were already dead at the start of the movie, and Nemo never came into existence. The whole film is Marlin trying to get over his grief by imagining himself saving one of his dead children. Yeah, we warned you these were dark. Oh, Edna can see the future. We all know that Edna Mode from The Incredibles really, really hates capes. So much that it's become her catchphrase. She says in the movie that capes have caused the deaths of the supers, and that's why she refuses to make any costume with capes. Some theorists believe Edna is a super herself with the power to see the future, which explains why she made the Jack-Jack suit in the first film specifically fireproof, even though she said she did Wield the power of the ninja strike. Know the baby's powers. Some believe that she failed to predict the future when it came to those fallen superheroes and made their costumes with capes. But once they died because of their suit malfunction, she went into hiding and was grief-stricken because of it. This is especially the case when she mentioned Strato Girl, who was, as she put it, only a child, when her cape caused her to get sucked into the engine of a jet. Yikes. Another theory is that Syndrome asked Edna to make him a super suit as well, but she saw the fact that he would be a problem for the Incredible family, a family she cares for dearly, so she purposely made him one with a cape, predicting it would be his demise because he was evil. b Starliner leaving each day. We'll clean up the mess while you're away. By and Large owns the Earth. The company, BNL, also known as By and Large, is featured throughout Pixar movies a lot. BNL owns Earth and the Axiom ship that all the humans now live on in Wally, -E, but it can be seen in other movies too, which makes us believe that the BNL Corporation was the downfall of the human race in the Pixar films because of its over monopolization. BNL is the company that is trying to buy out Carl's house in Up and is even the brand name of batteries inside of Buzz Lightyear, just to name a few examples. First thing on my list, get registered. The Monster University enrollment page. Stepping away from the depressing fan theories of the Pixar universe, let's focus on some little-known facts like how Pixar tried to promote Monsters U by creating an actual college enrollment site for Monsters University. The website looks pretty real with fake testimonials, an application page, and reminders for students to pick up their ID cards. Pretty legit. I'm Lotso Huggin' Bear, but please call me Lotso. Lotso Huggin' Bear. To promote Toy Story 3, Pixar made a very 80s-like commercial to pretend to sell Lotso Huggin' Bear. In fact, it was a little too successful. Besides the commercial being creepy and Lotso being a villain in the film, Pixar eventually... Okay. Ready. My mom and dad just walked in. So stuffed bear that looked just like the movie villain and even smelled like strawberries just like Lotso claims in the movie. It was reported that some children had nightmares from their stuffed bears being so much like the movie version. Forget the bear, how about that baby on a swing? Man, that's scary. Yeah. Mater's prone to exaggeration, I wouldn't say she's a big fan. Cars 2 is the worst Pixar film ever. It's hard to follow up a much-loved Pixar movie with a sequel and have it be just as well-received as the first. Toy Story was one of the lucky ones, and Monsters, Inc. just skid by on the likable scale with its prequel, Monsters, U. But Cars wasn't as lucky. Cars 2 is the lowest-scoring Pixar film of all time, getting a messy 39% on Rotten Tomatoes, which sets how bad this movie was in stone. It's a blemish Pixar certainly doesn't want us to remember. How can you possibly bring me lower? What more can you take away from me? PG rating. It's hard to think that a Pixar film would get anything but a G rating, yet three Pixar films have gotten slapped with a PG rating. The first is The Incredibles, and of course The Incredibles 2. It's said that these got the PG rating for action violence and the use of the word God. The second Pixar film to get the PG rating was Up, surprisingly. We aren't sure what's so PG about a grumpy old man traveling to South Africa, but Up got one anyway. Maybe it was the heartbreaking opening montage. My 
goodness, you and your friends ain't ever getting out of here now. I made it out once. You got lucky once. Toy Story 3 almost didn't happen. Hard to believe big studios like Pixar and Disney can have major feuds, and believe it or not, both of these companies are not new to fighting with each other. Some forgot that Pixar and Disney aren't exactly the same company. Beloved sequel Toy Story 3 was almost not even made because of, you guessed it, a money issue. Disney approached Pixar to make Toy Story 3, but told Pixar that it wouldn't count towards their multi-film contract, which pissed Pixar off to say the least. Disney then came back saying that they would make a Toy Story 3 without them. Disney's Toy Story 3 would have involved all of Andy's beloved toys teaming up to save Buzz Lightyear from a Taiwanese toy factory. But of course, it's all history after Disney bought Pixar, and the Pixar team was able to throw out Disney's old script and start from scratch, and we're so glad they did. You handle it too much, he's not gonna last. No, it's amazing! You're a genius! He's just like no! Toy Story 2 was nearly deleted. Toy Story has some pretty interesting secrets, but nothing's quite as juicy as Toy Story 2 almost being totally deleted. Why is it right next to the Enter key? I don't know. Someone at Pixar accidentally ran the command RM on the drive where all the Toy Story 2 files were kept. You might be wondering what RM does. It's basically a self-destruct for computers wiping everything off the device as fast as it can. The creative animators watched in horror as Woody's hats and boots disappeared, followed by Woody himself, like the snap heard around the cinematic world. Other characters had soon been deleted as well. The animators tried unplugging the machines, but most of the movie was already gone. To make matters worse, backups had failed for the last month, so there was no additional copies of the film. Always back up your work, folks. Insert absolute panic here. Someone was going to be fired, but it turns out that one person had copied the whole film to her home computer. She brought the computer into Pixar so that the files could be downloaded, and Toy Story 2 was saved. All thanks to an at-home copy. She got a promotion. Pixar almost caused miners to drink. As a clever way to market Ratatouille, Pixar came up with a not-so-smart idea. They thought that it could be smart to sell a tie-in wine at Costco, complete with a Ratatouille label. Unfortunately for Pixar, the wine label was in violation of one of the California Wine Institute's codes of advertising standards, namely, no cartoon characters allowed, which makes sense if you think about it. It's cartoons for kids who can't drink. According to the Wine Institute, any image that might appeal to minors is prohibited on wine labels. Costco pulled the wine from its shelves before it was even sold, not wanting to encourage minors to drink. Dang, Pixar, you need a new marketing team. So did I tell you? Huh? Nothing to worry about. Toy Story almost never was. Toy Story doesn't seem to have the best of luck during its production, but hey, it was Pixar's first film and it became a golden standard for animation films, but it wasn't always like that. The creative animators behind Toy Story brought some story reels to their bosses at Disney for approval. Disney hated it. Woody and Buzz were too sarcastic, too unlikable, and generally awkward together. Joss Whedon called the original Woody a thundering a-hole. That's not flattering at all, and he's played by Tom Hanks, the most lovable actor of all time. Luckily, the creative animators were given a second chance to recreate Woody and Buzz, and the rest is history. To infinity and beyond! Hey, where are you going? I'm not finished with you! Nice talking with you. There you have it. Do you agree with this list? Which Pixar fact made you the most shook? None. But yeah, so that was, um... Oh. 18? Was it eight, 18? 18 dark secrets, apparently. Interesting. It's really interesting. No. Oh. Excuse me.